Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers and this is... Pat O. Pat O. Happy after Halloween. Happy oh. post-Halloween. How was your... Um, post is a much better word than after. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how was your Halloween weekend? It was all right. Um, yeah. yeah, we did uh, trunk or treating on Saturday. That was really the bulk of our Halloweening this year. Uh, my kids are kind of too old to do it. Okay. They're like in that weird in between spot where like they're not kids kids anymore, but they're not like teenagers and young adults that go out and party for Halloween. So um, the majority of our festivities happened on Saturday for the school's trunk or treat, and then Sunday was pretty much just me folding laundry and uh, and passing out candy to the kids that like in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Okay. So that was that was really the majority of my Halloween was probably spent passing out candy. What uh what costume did you land on? So I went with the squid monster thing, uh, cool. which w- was kind of interesting because by the time we got to the trunk or treat, I noticed that my son's penguin costume, he was a seven foot tall penguin, which Lovecraft fans will remember uh, are like some of the villains in At the Mountains of Madness. And I was like, holy shit, we're like, we actually look like a, not that anyone there made that connection, trust me, but uh, we were like a pair of... Uh, hp lovecraft uh cosplay cosplayers i guess you'd say um but yeah that was it my daughter was some anime character that all the other kids were like enamored by i have no idea who demon slayer i guess and i'm pretty up on anime for the most part but i never heard of this shit but uh yeah so that's what she did and uh that was it but i did get to uh i did get a chance to watch a movie that i want to plug real quick Okay, and I started reading a book that I think we're going to talk about a lot on the show. Sure. So the mo- the movie that I watched was Spine of Night. Um, it's an animated like throwback to heavy metal, the the animated cartoon. Um, it's very violent. It's very bloody. It's very there's lots of nudity. There's lots of cartoon boobies in it. Um, and it's like an anthology uh, series with uh, Lucy Lawless, Pat Oswalt, uh, Joe Maglioni, and uh, who's the other guy? I forget his name. He's having a moment right now. He was the bad guy in Hudson Hawk, and he was nominated for an Oscar last year. Richard Grant. I don't know. But anyway, totally worth checking out. Uh, it's it, I was not high when I watched it because I was passing out candy to the kids, but I wish I was. It was uh, absolutely spectacular. And then the book that I'm reading right now is by Adam Go Rightly. It's called Saucer, Spooks, and Kooks, UFO Disclosure in the Age of Aquarius. And... Um, I'm in. I'm like a, a tenth of the way through it, but it's a, it has a lot to do with cattle mutilations, and it's got like some of the first actual theories that I've, um, I've read about cattle mutilations. Like not just like oh, it's aliens and it's something with DNA or some shit. Like it really gets into the, like the cattle mutilations and when they started and where they started and who made the first reports and who made the first connections and shit like this. And uh, it's very, very interesting. And it makes me want to do the cat emulation episode even more. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. That's definitely, that's very cool. I definitely am all for that. Well, we've been talking about doing cat emulations for a long time. And it just seems to continue to be a theme in our lives. And uh, so, I mean, I think that's a good start. Yeah. Can't ignore it. <laughs> so what about you how was your uh you you had like <laughs> you had basically this year's uh harley quinn costume with your with your mothman co- i mean you did it the best hands down but it was it was a very popular costume this year I'd have uh, to say. what do you mean you've seen a lot of moth mothman out there <laughs> i saw I, I let me put it like this uh excluding you um it's a it's a non-zero number of costumes Wow. Okay. So, but I mean, I you 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 rocked it harder than anyone else. They should all take notes from you. But yeah, I mean, I see Mothman costumes every year, but like, not everybody dresses as the Mothman. But um, you know, I I did see it more than usual, I I believe. But yeah, no, I was I was I wasn't Mothman though. I was Mothman. Correct. And uh, correct. So. <laughs> you know, so great. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I did my Halloween party thing. You know, I had my my party, and that was fun. And then uh, you know, we did the trick or treat trick-or-treat thing on sunday and yeah but pretty uneventful to be honest with you um you know that's just kind of been the way the cookie's been crumbling lately as things have just been very slow and weird um but that's okay you know so yeah i mean i don't really have any stories to tell about it (laughs) is all that stuff over now because i was reading um 
I was reading last night actually that we we just hit the tail end of a sunspot cycle, and that kind of coincided with all the uh, astrology shit that's been going on the past couple uh, weeks that people have been talking about. Are we? I know we've even brought it up on the show before, but yeah. are, are we finally out of that? Uh, well, for the majority, yes. Um, there's still. I mean. So some planets, when they go into uh, retrograde, they're in retrograde for years. Oh, geez. So, well, and there's, I mean, there's always something for the most part. I mean, there's usually always something in, in retrograde. It just depends on, there's multiple, multiple factors at play to whether or not it will affect you and how it will affect you when it's in retrograde. So, you know, refer to your birth charts if you have not. Um, but for the collective um, people, yes, yes, we are, we are out of that. I think we're still on the tail end of the um, of the shadow days, which takes a couple. So it's like even though like um, for uh, Mercury, so even though like a planet goes direct doesn't mean that it's reflected on Earth yet. It takes a while for the effects of it to get here because of, you know, light years and how how it travels through space. Um, so it still takes a couple of days for things to kind of go back to normal. But like I was saying, I think for the majority, yeah, we're pretty much we're pretty much out of that time period. It feels and now I have I'm. I celebrate Halloween. We decorated this year. I'm always very festive and shit, I guess. Like it's, I like it as far as holidays go. Um, but I, there was, there's a, a very palpable sense of relief that I have that this is over. You know what I mean? I, I, and it's, yeah. And I don't know why it's not like it was, it was a negative thing and it wasn't like, you know, it all culminated in some party or something like that. Like it was, it's just like, it's over now. I'm glad that we like I came home from work today and before I even took my shoes off, I took down all the Halloween decorations and put away in the garage. Like like that's it. You know what I mean? Like it feels good to kind of just like turn the page on this one. Not that this was necessarily negative, but just I don't know. There's something about it. Um yeah, I'm ready to be it, moving it, in the next it wasn't one. a bad Halloween. It just it was a very strange and indifferent one. And I feel like a lot of people felt that this year. And yeah. probably it, you know, could very well be because the planets were just so fucking out of whack. It was hard to really just enjoy it, you know, and so that's just um that's just where we were and now it's uh no nut November. So if you <laughs> that, I fucked that um, one already, Ashers. <laughs> if you like to be <laughs> sad, you know <laughs> <laughs> no not november's for you <laughs> that, that went out the fucking window when you were 15 minutes late for this recording session i'll tell you that right now <laughs> wow so, i mean you know here i'll pull I up mean... the young lady's name who's fault of skylar vox you know he's fucking you take it up with her i'm sorry about that oh <laughs> well then um i didn't know we were naming names but well um... apparently i get a hell of a lot of fan feedback when i do so i'm gonna start name dropping my uh <laughs> Your flavor say, of the week. I mean, if it if, if it gets people calling that phone number, what's the what's the hotline again? Seven seven three five nine weird. Well then, um, I that's swear to God, takes. I I will have yes, I will play your guys's your guys's messages. I promise you, I will. Um, things have just been very strange. I've been doing a lot of regular people, very boring, very monotonous. It's shit. freaking her the fuck out. It is. It's fucking. It's fucking wild. It's just got my ass in a tailspin right now. So, it, but it's it's slowing down. Things are starting to get kind of normal. I still don't have a vehicle, so that's great. I'm going on week three now without a vehicle. So it's been fucking awesome. Damn. So, and it's just a matter of you know actually diagnosing the issue and then getting the fucking part. It's ridiculous. So anyway, you know, like I said, I, I've just been doing a lot of um, regular people stuff, and I apologize, but I'm I'm getting ready. CryptidCon is uh, right around the corner, and so I am conserving my energy because that's gonna be who that's gonna be a hell of a weekend. So super exciting stuff. Um, Pat doesn't know if he's gonna go, so if you think Pat should go to CryptidCon, you should call us at seven seven three five nine weird and tell Pat that he should go to CryptidCon. Um, but <laughs> I'm I am like ninety percent sure I'm gonna go. Still, I did not get my ticket this weekend. Unfortunately, our sub pump went out uh, last week in the heavy rains that the Midwest were uh, were inundated with. Yeah, and uh, so that had to take precedence. But we'll see. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Right now, it's just a time period of just like chill and kind of get your regular shit together. And like, it's not, it's just not a very fun time. I don't care. You know what? It's, it's the week after Halloween. And by this weekend, my Christmas tree will be up and it will be beautiful. And you can suck my dick if that's a problem. Um, <laughs> I've earned it this year. 
<laughs> yeah, you were in a good dick second, I haven't you? <laughs> um, did I tell you my my plan for Christmas decorations? I'm actually in the same headspace where I'm very I'm I'm very much looking forward to Christmas decorations. We are doing uh, this is me and my son an idea we came up with together. This isn't just me trying to project on my kid like he's cool. We seriously, this was a conversation we had in the car. Um, we're gonna get a nativity scene, like one of the, your standard Walmart FIM nativity scenes uh with an african-american jesus if we can get one or or a jesus of color if they have it okay because the theme of this nativity scene is going to be authenticity all right okay i want a middle eastern jesus on my front lawn and then for the angels my son and i are going to build biblically accurate angels okay not just the people or the little cherubs with the wings on it i mean the fucking monstrosities that are like peeking through from another dimension with like a million eyes and four groups of feathers and the fucking lamb's head and all that shit and we already designed one of them we're going to take pool noodles and loop them around in a spiral and then put ping pong balls for eyeballs all over it and all we need to do is figure out the um the humanoid one with the animal heads and the and the four sets of wings and shit but we were going to do like an actual nativity scene. Like if this shit really happened, this is what you'd be seeing. Well, <laughs> you're be... going to absolutely have to take pictures of that. That's awesome. Of course. Of course. I well, mean, we still, still have to do it. We're, we're, we're going to be building them in November. And then, you know, hopefully the day after Thanksgiving, this thing goes up. You got it ready. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think that's great. No, well, I'm sure you can find, um, you know, actual Jesus maybe online somewhere poc jesus yeah i'm sure yeah. Well, no know, no no. They, i've seen him around in the neighborhood before so you know if anything get you just a little a baby doll you know what i mean and put it as jesus so i don't know but no that's a really good idea no i'm definitely i'm so down i am feeling the christmas um spirit I, that's that's what i'm just moving right along here on my holidays um <laughs> but no yeah like i said my, my weekend's pretty i mean for the most part it's pretty uneventful i mean we did the trick-or-treating thing and you know the kid enjoyed herself and i enjoyed myself and you know it was uh it was good but um yeah that was my weekend like i said pretty boring stuff um so that's really all i got i got some news you want to hear the news what you got oh did you see the story that i sent you i did okay will you talk about that no i was going to talk about point? that okay i was going right. to talk about that first oh all right never mind i wasn't going to talk about that first but let's go ahead and talk about it <laughs> um because i also kind of want to mention it too um because I'll, we'll get there okay so um Pat, why don't you share you it's your news you you bring the news go ahead oh i don't have it in front of me um okay, so ba- right. basically there was an actual case this year of a uh someone that found hypodermic needles in candy bars and it happened in ohio no less it sure did uh just north of uh between lima and toledo which is actually the the part of ohio that i'm the most familiar with because that's what's right across from fort wayne so i've been yeah. to toledo a bunch of times tony paco's i am Check not out. very familiar with that what is that a pizza place or something no it was mentioned in mash it's like uh it's like coney dogs you know how you guys call chili dogs coney dogs because you're fucking creative yeah so it's just like a chili dog place <laughs> i didn't know other places didn't call it <laughs> coney dogs no that's an ohio thing that's <laughs> and the way you guys put chili like it's just it's it's whole fucking thing chicago does hot dogs very specifically and these Toledo abominations are like, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Everybody's, you gotta, I mean, different places got different hot dogs. It's not just a battle between Ohio and, and Chicago. <laughs> like, what, are, what about the New York? I mean, come on now. Uh, anyway, um, okay, so Coney Dogs, that's the thing. Anyway, you were saying that they found hypodermic needles and in, in this candy and what have you. Yeah. Um, which I did read about, and actually not just there. I mean, I read it in my local news. Now, wherever this place is, it's very far away from me. The city, I don't recognize. I've never heard of this fucking place before. Right. Um, you know, it's so I'm assuming it's you know one of those weird middle of nowhere cities in Ohio. Um, but it was on my local news too, and so I was trying to do like some digging. You know, I don't know about this, Pat. I think this is a weird one because like, it's not like the reports that I read about it are just like oh this these needles were found in this kit kat bar and then another kit kat bar but there, it's really not like an interview with a parent that found it or anybody that's actually connected to it so how do we know that it's not just somebody just did this just to fucking make it on the news or 
you know what you i know mean what? like that's... how do we know that this was actually somebody that passed out so that's you know what and they, you... they said they only found two pieces of candy like that right and it was from the same person they were sewing needles so at uh, the name of the town we're gonna do we're gonna do real live uh fact checking here fostoria ohio okay so let's look at this because i'm very curious at what the population is i'm sure it's pretty fucking small the population is thirteen thousand people so so you're talking about a relative i mean we got suburbs around here that's that are small but that. that's not that small i mean it's yeah. yeah but my point is is that you know, you're not hearing about this happening in New York. You're not hearing about this happening in Cleveland. You're not hearing about this happening in, in Detroit. You're hearing about a case of this in Fostoria, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, which I don't, I've never heard of this. I've lived in Ohio my whole life, never heard of this. Town. <laughs> right. So it's kind of like, it. it is kind of seems like either this is a, a real random nut job or i mean someone's crazy here either they actually did it and they're crazy or they faked it and they're crazy and in in any case it's it's the product of one mentally unstable person i mean i just think it's weird like why didn't somebody put it more you know why is there not more candy that's you know come out and they're like oh we found more you know what i mean like if it was actually somebody like targeting children i guess sticking needles and fucking halloween candy but you know so the last episode um when we had, we you know talked about this pretty extensively um somebody had commented on the um commented on because i put i put the episodes up on youtube some of you're listening to this on youtube now um somebody had commented on the last video and mentioned that that it, it some it, somebody in huntington west virginia had been sprinkling crack on candy and then feeding it to the kids there and then like a bunch of kids died or overdosed or whatever holy but, like, shit so they mentioned that, but when I went to go Google it, I didn't find anything. And they said that, oh yeah, well it happened. I don't. Maybe they're just trying to cover it up. And and I know you're listening to this now, but why? Well, I, well, I why would cover would? it up. Well, because it would. I could understand why you would cover it up. Why? Because you wouldn't want to create a panic. What do you mean, though? Every single year, every news station in every town across America talks about exactly this. So. It's not really causing a panic if that's something that people are used to. That's a very good point. Or expect. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking forward to if they find any information on this. I I would love to read about it. I'd be very interested. I'm not saying that it didn't happen. Um, I'm just saying that, you know, I would like to see the evidence because we talked about it. And, you know, I kind of mentioned that just, you know, the science points to that. This stuff does happen, but it doesn't really happen. Like, I mean, it doesn't happen a lot. You know, so okay, weird. but let's let's continue with this train of thought. So when when do you think that these are just all like myths or or that nobody? Because like let's look at this. Let's look at this case with from Fostoria, Ohio. Sure. Okay. Sure. And let's let's just use this as like a microcosm. So either crazy person fakes this, and this is just something that they came up with to get attention even though it's interesting their name isn't mentioned in the story here although i guess you wouldn't really necessarily need the person's name no okay uh two that this actually happened and there's a different crazy person that decided to fuck with candy all right sure option three is that none of this happened and this is just something that the press drums up every once in a while like it's an by some higher power that says circulate stories about candy tampering or this is yeah. something that because i mean this is either it's this is a paper i mean yeah i don't know you know it, well it does i mean if you see an article you know you you look at your local news and you see the same shit all the time right i mean whatever it is you know pat you're in chicago i'm sure you are familiar with your local news and roughly right. what's in it all the time but you know out of all that stuff you you see oh you know hypodermic needles found in candy bars what article are you most likely to click on it's going to be that one and actually read through it all so they get paid for the click so i mean it, it's a it's it's a very uh not a noteworthy story but i mean it, it's it, like i said it sells papers and you know so i could definitely see it being a media marketing move just to get people to click on their shit and read it um i could also see it being people that just you know decided to stick some needles and some candy bars and say oh my god we found these but they didn't really 
Um, you know, but it could also be a psycho that just decided I'm going to go buy a whole bag of candy and I'm going to stand outside and I'm going to hand it out. And in two of those candy bars, I'm just going to play a little game and put fucking needles in them. Does that happen? Uh, you know, I guess so. I guess it. I mean, it's not that it's impossible, just that it's highly unlikely. It doesn't really happen that often. Yeah. I. And that's what we, I mean, that's kind of what the conclusion that we, you know, that we came to on the last episode is that, yeah, this does happen. It's not that it never, ever happens, just that it doesn't usually happen. Yeah. You know, it doesn't happen a lot. So I don't know. Um, but I feel like, you know, these stories kind of come out every year. I mean, as far as the hunting, Huntington story goes, um, I mean, if any of you can find any information or maybe you're from the area, maybe you remember it, maybe you want to talk about it. I mean, you can send it to me on social media or, you know, of course, tell your story on uh, 773-59 weird, uh, right, right to the voicemail. <laughs> um, so <laughs> people are going to get so sick of that. Yeah. If um, you guys happen across while you're eating your Halloween candy, if you happen across anything before you dial 911, dial. Seven, dial, seven, dial that number and let us know if, you, if there's crack on your almond joy or whatever <laughs> you know <laughs> just kidding nobody eats almond joy nobody put crack on those um that's the only way you could get anybody to eat them <laughs> um oh great now people are going to be mad because they like almond joy <laughs> what's the difference and, between parsley and pussy I, I don't i don't know no one eats parsley oh wow <laughs> there you go so no <laughs> okay well now it's almond joy and pussy is that what it's like? <laughs> i don't know <laughs> almond joy is the new parsley my grandma um, told me that joke <laughs> oh bless your soul grandma um but anyway well okay so there's you know there's that but no that, okay so that was uh one story good job pat for finding that one um I got another one here. I just kind of wanted to talk about. It's kind of more of a an opinion, an opinion piece. No, nah, not really. Um, there was a poll done, and it was only a poll of about two thousand people <clears throat> here in America and New York. And um, what they found out of the two thousand people polled was that fifty seven percent of those people believe in the paranormal, so they believe in you know ghosts or you know hauntings and things like that. 39% believe in um, aliens or life on other planets. And then um, 27% believe in cryptids like Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster, things like that. Um, why do you think that it is so wildly different? Why do you think that 57% believe in the paranormal as opposed to 27% believing in cryptids? I think that... Um that's what you're seeing is people that think about this versus people that don't like i think if you ask your average person on the street do you believe in ghosts most people won't really think about it there's they'll just be like yeah sure okay you know it, th that is not a very hard question it doesn't take a lot of soul searching it's not going to change your world view right um i bet if you looked at if you if you took a if you discounted the ghost and cryptic questions and you just asked those two pe those like two individuals um what their worldview were were i'm sure they would have completely different outlooks on I mean, politics and and sure. culture and stuff like that i think you have somebody that you know that the top percentage uh that you gave those are probably people that are more just kind of like normal or basic <laughs> you know sure. like yeah i've seen ghost hunters i think on discovery channel or like you know yeah i believe in ghosts whatever and then you have somebody like you know do you believe in you know ogopogo or whatever the fucking thing is and like they'll you know that's like a somebody that's spent a lot more time thinking about this shit right you know and i think there's a lot fewer people on the walking around on this planet that actually spend time reading and uh doing the research that takes to to believe in these things you know any geek off the street knows the concept of ghosts it doesn't qu require a lot of like exposure to non-mainstream materials uh when you start moving into aliens and stuff you're getting more and more specialized areas of knowledge until you get to the cryptids and the cryptids are like the apex nerd for this shit you know <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's, that's from what I've learned in the past year and a half of doing this fucking show, is that's, no, <laughs> the that's a good people point. are a completely different fucking breed. You know? sure. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, no, I, I think you're right. I think that a lot of people, because here's also something that I've considered with with a view like this, because I do find that a lot of people, I've had people straight up tell me, tell me that they believe in ghosts but don't believe in cryptids, and it's like, how the fuck can you? But possibly believe in one and not the other like ghosts aren't a ridiculous not, concept to you but bigfoot oh hell no that's just not you know trust it me it took them a fraction of a second to make that distinction in their head they didn't give it any serious thought or anything you know what they i mean like yeah they just haven't done the research and you know i understand right. that but also let me tell you something okay all right you're in new york right and we'll just i'm just using new york because that's where this poll is connected you're in new york you're in the middle of the city how many chances and new york city do you think that you have to see a bigfoot i mean how frequently do you think bigfoot just moseys into new york city and says here i am probably never um but how i mean how likely are your chances of experiencing a haunting or just something paranormal in general just something unexplained um i think a lot more people have a lot more chances to experience the unexplained in general now whether that be ghosts or i've heard a lot of weird stuff i mean it could be you know influenced by aliens and things like that if, if, sure. you're, if you're having unexplained phenomena happening usually a lot of people their mind immediately goes to ghosts um so i think that maybe that's another reason for it is because in order for you to experience a cryptid most of the time you have to be in an area where cryptids are going to live i mean these are animals after all um right. you know most people are living in very urban you know very city-like areas and uh aren't experiencing that so i think your demographic matters also but let me tell you something right now listen 39 percent believe in life on other planets this isn't why is this a matter of of opinion anymore like why is this up for debate there are there there is life on other planets there is the universe is fucking infinite it is not possible for us to be the only ones it's just fucking not and well, that's so disappointing yeah i mean we've proven there's bacteria and fucking water and shit like that's not even right it's not even for debate right right you know and so that's what i was reading about it it wasn't just like do you because the question becomes different like it's either do you believe that aliens have come here right well, yeah. and the, you also got to remember the question the, the poll the title of the poll should really be you know we pull the type of people that will sit there and do a poll over the fucking phone and we found that of, the, of those people so and so believe in ghosts and so and so believe in aliens who are these people that they're talking to they're not right i don't know how they conducted it or, yeah, they're know, the type of people that respond to this shit like right. i never have you ever gotten one of these phone calls before no no and if you did would you do it yeah maybe you would it depends on what the topic probably was. not yeah but maybe you wouldn't so it's not this isn't a very good sampling of, of where people are at it is interesting but i've asked before i mean i've done a poll on like twitter and things like that and um you know a lot of the times you know aliens are not aliens uh the ghosts beat everything and it's weird especially the people that follow me it's like really ghosts that crypt is always trail trail last um so that i mean i just always thought that was strange but again anybody that thinks that you know anything other than there is life on other planets i mean you got a long way to go and this show is probably not where you want to start i don't know <laughs> what to tell you <laughs> maybe it is but you know i i mean that's just basics of like living you know would it really be surprising anymore if we did come out and say yeah there's life on other planets uh it shouldn't be it shouldn't be and in, in a world of infinite possibilities it really shouldn't be surprising at all to anybody we should all kind of know um but anyway so I thought that that was interesting and notable, so I thought maybe we would talk about it. And well, I already I just made our own uh, unscientific Twitter poll. So for the next, oh shit, I guess I, oh this thing will expire by the time the show airs. God damn it! <laughs> just delete what? it. Well, and and do it on Wednesday. Why put it up on That's Wednesday? So much effort. All right, if I remember, I will. 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> so there may or may not be a poll right now on Twitter <laughs> that you may or may not be able to take. Uh, we'll see. I mean, Pat is sober, so we can at least rely on the fact that, like, if he doesn't That's do it. A very it's, loose definition of that fucking word right now. <laughs> if, if he doesn't do it, it's not because he's under the influence. But Right, exactly. Um, he didn't He didn't have his crack candy yet, so. No. Crack on I've been going through all of it, and I haven't found any crack so far. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Plenty of razor blades and hypodermic needles, but no crack yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there was there was that. Another one that I wanted to mention um, was that our um, you know our buddy Tobias Whalen over at the Singular Fortean Society. You know, you met him. He uh, posted an article recently on uh, SingularFortean dot com, and it was about this um, UFO sighting that took place back in I think it was september october um i don't remember i should have read about this a little bit more but i forgot until just now um anyway so he posted this ufo sighting and it was accompanied with pictures and i thought that the description was weird not just that when i first saw the article because i saw it in a preview on social media and when i had seen the preview the picture i thought it was my picture do remember a couple of weeks ago I, I told you guys well and i told you pat i showed you the pictures and i saw this weird silver thing outside and i went outside and started taking pictures of it and i didn't know what it was whatever this dude took a picture of and and then this guy actually caught it on video um looks exactly like what the fuck i saw just a couple weeks back and it just i don't know it's very exciting when things like that happen like yes it should be exciting already that i i see these ufos all the time but um it's even more exciting when something else kind of corroborates with my story and this did um so i'm going to be sending my pictures over to um tobias and emily and i'm gonna let them you know do whatever they want with it um but you need his email address i can give it to you no, I, I got it All right, just <laughs> i'm good i got it but uh yeah so yeah i thought, thought that was really cool um so definitely get on the if you guys aren't reading um singular authority and society definitely get on their website and check out their stuff they're on all the social media platforms um you know and and then go check out that article specifically i guess I'll, I'll post a link here in the description but yeah so there was that too that was my my last piece of news awesome so what are we talking about this week ashers um i don't know Did, didn't you read the title <laughs> i can't see it from where i'm sitting <laughs> So everybody knows, you guys know, you clicked on the episode. We're going to talk about uh, old uh, John Wayne and, uh, you know, not that John Wayne, but the bad John Wayne. Jesus Christ, um, that was fucking terrible. Oh, my God. I need to, I need to meet you in Kentucky and we need to fucking, we need to have an immediate training session. On what? On we John Wayne? <laughs> What are, we, what are we trading about and i know you're a single mom but you don't have to start making the dad joke sorry it's fucking painful <laughs> yeah i just thought of that one on the fly this one, i don't even write this shit it just comes to me i, um, I believe it <laughs> what do you uh pat you are um also from chicago and right. uh <clears throat> I mean, Gacy, he's he's kind of a thing there, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, he so they so spoiler alert, they executed him when I was like 14. But uh, leading up to that, the two things that I he was always you you knew about him as a kid growing up here, like the story was not anything it was very fresh in everyone's mind. Um, and the two things that I remember the most about him were uh, number one the paintings that he used to do that he was selling from prison that was a big deal around here in the in the late 80s early 90s before he was executed uh he would paint these creepy fucking drawings and like all the weirdos in chicago would have one um and the other thing was that his final meal on death row was kfc yeah and i i grew up in a very strict brown's chicken family uh or we we you know there's the, there's the three fried chicken food fan food chains there's popeyes kfc and uh, browns and we were team browns and hearing that kfc was the last meal of that guy it made a lot of sense as a kid growing up because we reviled that shit i've since come around i don't have such <laughs> You're like, oh, that well. fucking guy we should have yeah. known <laughs> yeah, exactly eating kfc over there like a fucking derelict but uh yeah that was i mean that's as far as i knew like as a kid and then i got older and obviously i run into it a little bit but sure wow very interesting well were you guys i mean especially being um 
you know, a, a teenage boy in Chicago at any point. I mean, do you think that that contributed to any of your local lore or anything like that? I mean, because you were kind of his uh, demograph. No, I wasn't that attractive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never had to worry. I never, I should, honestly, I should watch what I say there because it's not entirely true. Um, it just, no, I guess, you know, it added to the creepiness of clowns. Like I was researching the show this week and my kid was like asking me what, what the topic was and everything. And I was telling him like, this was kind of the OG killer clown myth. You know, um, I wouldn't say specifically that that Stephen King drew, you know, it and Pennywise from this entirely, but it definitely created it definitely added to the uh, the conception, the kind of the the mass, you know, pop culture conception of clowns as being creepy or evil sure. or something. Uh, and yeah, so outside of that, no, I mean, I never worried about, you know, you, you got the standard ch- child predator uh, warnings growing up, but not, nothing specifically for Gacy. He was already arrested by the time I, uh, by the time I was old enough. Although, as we'll get into later on in the show, if my parents knew the real facts behind the case, they probably still would have been very protective of me. Sure. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. So, I mean. Getting into Gacy, Gacy's an interesting, uh, he's an interesting guy just because he, he had so many victims, you know, most of which we, we don't even, we're not even aware of how many yet, uh, you know, and we might not ever know. Um, yeah, just two weeks then, ago, they, uh, they, 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 they identified one of them. They're still identifying these people. Right. Um, it right. was one of the bodies they had pulled out of the crawl space and using 23 and me or one of these fucking things. They uh, were able to trace the DNA back to a relative and they identified the corpse. Right. And you know? so, you know, it's it's one of those things where we really, you know, have no idea, again, the scope of exactly what happened. And we probably never will. Um, but, you know, Gase is a very famous one, mostly because he's, you know, associated as being, the you know, a killer clown. Um, which you know we'll we'll get into and talk about a little bit more, but uh, not just that. This man was a pillar in ev- in his community and everything that he did. He was very successful, um, and you know he was definitely a a big go getter. And you know he's just not the typical, you know what what you would think for a serial killer. I mean, what we're finding out now here in you know here we are in twenty twenty one is that you know sometimes these people you know serial killers don't look like who you think they do or they don't act like who you think they do they could be literally anybody you know that's why we got people like bundy and gacy and you know so on even even Dahmer. i mean he was an alcoholic but you know he was very he wasn't very ambitious and didn't really have a lot of motivation to do anything else except for you know kill people and eat them i guess um so i mean it really should come as no surprise anymore but i mean that's why cases like this do get really big um is because people don't expect people like gacy to be a part of something like this but let's we'll kind of start um you know from the beginning um then you know there's a couple of things that i i want to talk about in his childhood that it, you know i think are obviously notable um i mean for the most part gacy grew up in a in a decent family um you know that i mean his dad was a raging alcoholic and he wasn't great but like his mom was kind of great like she loved him and uh was very protective of him especially against his father um his dad would would beat on him and stuff and his mom would always try to you know take take the heat you know otherwise and uh so you know there there was that um but gacy had a head injury when he was really really young and then not just that he ended up having a bunch of of medical issues in his life and there's been a lot of speculation as to whether or not these things had affected him as an adult and affected his way of thinking. And that's why he ended up kind of turning into who he was. But, um, you know, he was always the fat kid. He couldn't he couldn't play sports. He wasn't allowed because of his medical issues that he had. Um, you know, his dad always referred to him as, you know, a sissy and he called him a queer and, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. Um I don't know, Pat. Did you dig too much into his childhood? Yeah, story? um, it's interesting that you just li- <laughs> you li- listened to all that stuff and were like, "Yeah, he didn't have that bad of a childhood." Like Jesus, I don't know what the fuck you were subjected to. Why, dear? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, I kind of showed your true colors there. So, uh, w- well, he, you know, he was sexually assaulted as a kid. Um, he was. Yeah, you know, one of his dad's friends. Um, I don't know what the fuck he did to him, but. Uh, you know molested him in a in a truck and uh 
didn't want to tell his dad because you know he's a he did the whole victim shame thing where like you think it's your fault or you think your dad's gonna be pissed at you and and from the stories that i read which is probably the same material you saw like the dad seemed like a little bit of a fucking psycho like having a father like that could definitely have an adverse reaction on a person yeah absolutely but what's what's interesting about gacy is that it didn't necessarily he was always troubled but he wasn't necessarily unsuccessful and that I think is what makes him kind of unique. Um, you know, he did eventually get married and, uh, coincidentally enough, the woman that he married, their family owned a chain of KFCs Yeah, and Gacy managed them and did very well for them and was well liked by his father-in-law and, and his dad came around at that point in his life and was very proud of him. Right. And then, um, you know, a couple years after that, so he's in a marriage he's he's doing well business wise i mean it's kind of like been handed to him by his in-laws but whatever he's doing the work you know and uh gets arrested for sodomizing children well, no yes and no um, well let's just was... go with yes let's assume that your co-host is not <laughs> no that's okay, it's <laughs> okay. Don't shoot me down unless you have to but <laughs> my point is is that it wasn't like he was in this dark depraved era of his life like I, I, he had all the things there he was and this is where he first gets involved with the jc's as well um but it's kind of like there was no reason for him to start abusing uh and acting on these tendencies right well yeah i mean, I mean they were unless very, it was well he definitely had a very dark spot in in his mind somewhere i mean he ended up and it's not like he didn't know that the kind of the kind of fantasies that he had were incorrect so at one point in time um after he had you know gotten his first car as an adult which his dad owned um and you know one time god damn it this cat i have a cat that won't leave me alone go get get out of here i'm trying to spray him go <laughs> you can't be a part of the show um his dad bought bought his card he would make payments on this card towards you know towards his dad and his dad would take the keys like and and like basically whenever he wanted to so even as an adult and this was like young adult you know gacy didn't have full freedom away from his father so what he did was he bought another set of keys and he took the car and he left and he went and he moved to vegas and he spent a couple of weeks in vegas um living in a mortuary and he would um you know so he saw dead bodies a lot and saw you know them embalming them and and stuff like that um well he would actually like crawl into the caskets with these bodies and like hang out with them and he knew that he was fucked up for this and so he after this had happened he kind of freaked out and then he, he called his mom and he went back home and so that was kind of the first sign that he was sick um in a way that's deeper than just i'm a closeted homosexual <laughs> you know what i mean like it was much deeper than that um you know he he definitely had some type of of depravity you know even then and so could you know, it have been oh go ahead I was going to say, it's interesting to, it's interesting to uh, talk about Gacy as a homosexual and whether or not, you know, was he or was it, I mean, like, okay, point blank. I mean, do, would you consider him to be gay? Yeah. Okay. So this was just... He was a gay guy who happened to be a serial killer. How much how much do you think that those two worlds intersect if you were to make a Venn diagram? You know what I mean? Like oh, how, much, I, how much overlap is there? I'd say there's stuff. I'd say I'm not gonna say that all gay people are serial killers, but I mean there's I, no, I wasn't asking you to that's no, of course not. That's entirely Cody Rigsby is not a serial killer. Let me just put that on the Fucking table there right are now. definitely you know people that um are i mean Dah dahmer's story is very similar to gacy's he was very ashamed of his sexuality so right. it, he he confused it with necrophilia 
And Which, I mean, Gacy in the story you just recounted exhibited, it's but doing the same kind of stuff. Yeah, it's just so interesting to me because as this story b- balloons, I feel like as we get more and more into the story, the the homosexual aspect becomes more and more of almost a focal point to it, and it's just it's a weird thing to get to up front. Like, you know, is this is more than just somebody who's ashamed of their sexuality? Although you have to wonder how much of a part does that play in it like it's definitely like, you know because is it about because sometimes they'll say rape isn't about the sex right so the fact that he's raping and murdering young men is it about the sex with the young men or is it about which would make it like a which would tie it back to the homosexuality or is it just that i like torturing and 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 murdering people and one way to torture them is to stick shit up their ass that they don't want in their ass or something like that you know what i mean well like, he never ever ever raped and murdered any women ever any girls or, and any he was women. married too i mean like that's a pretty that that's a that's a pretty far now maybe he was doing that for the approval of his father but like, like but like getting married like either you got to think you're at least half straight or you got to be really committed to that fucking story because that, you know, this was in the sixties and seventies. There was men that didn't get married. You know, he didn't have to get married. It's not like there was, you know, unless it was something specifically with his father, there wasn't a whole bunch of societal pressure telling him that he had to do it. He could have, he could have sidestepped that. Well, I mean, there kind of was because he was in, he was into politics. So, I mean, a family man is, is more of a credible man when it comes to, po- I don't think there's any, I mean, can you name a politician who was not married? You know what I mean? And so Trudeau. I, I think that that was probably who? Trudeau, right? I don't know who the hell, I, you know. The, prime minute, well, the, 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 the hunky, hunky Canadian guy. I don't politic. Well, I don't fucking well, know the, anything. I don't know anything about U.S. politics, let alone fucking Canadian politics. And they're, they're all North American scum. Give a shit about fucking politics. NAFTA? <laughs> um, bring, they're they're all on the, they're all fighting on the same team. So fuck those. It's, it's us against them, you guys. It's uh. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but anyway, but, but typically, I mean that it makes you look better. But no, his second wife. I mean, they had a very tumultuous relationship, and she, you know, says that they like he had sex with her, and then never had sex with her ever again. Told her he was never gonna have sex with her ever again. You he know, was that... very open about being bisexual. He had gay porn all over the place. He had men coming and going out of the house. He was gay she but you know they also did wife swapping and he would bring people home from the bar to bang her and shit like that was I, i'm not saying that it wasn't you know the marriage that she always dreamed of when she was a little girl but like it seems like she was she was into the shenanigans as well which is maybe why you thought hell I'll give it a shot another time if i have a kinky partner you know maybe i don't have to hide all this shit and do all you know i don't have to i can bring the guys home and we can just you know the house will just be a fuck pit <laughs> you well, won't have I to mean, worry about you know i don't remember they weren't together the the seven and the second wife weren't together for very long like she ended up they i mean she moved she moved in and then she they got into big fights and she one day you know packed up her kids and herself and just left and left them there um which is kind of where things really got out of control and so i don't remember exactly how long they were together but he was with the first wife for a while he actually had children with the first wife right and you know he had kind of at that point in his life had kind of done everything that he really had kind of set out to do and that was when his father's approval and um you know his dad he even says that his dad eventually apologized and uh was actually really proud of him and then he went to jail for you know molesting a a 15 year old boy so i mean (laughs) you know and that kind of ruined everything so like when that happened so you like like we mentioned it was part of the jc's which is i don't you know i'm not entirely sure what the jc's do do you know that one it's like a men's club but it's not you know it's It's not tied to like men's club yeah, but it's not tied to like any kind of like esoteric order like the Masons or something like that. Like it's it's a more secular um just like an Elks Lodge or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got stuff like that here. I just think I don't know, are JCs is that a is that across the country or is that just a Chicago thing? I don't know. No, cuz he started in Iowa with it. Oh, that's, that's true. That's the, true. the 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 15-year-old he assaulted was one of his uh partners or his fellow JCs son. Yeah, it was one of yeah. And so you know which was really fucked up i mean so he you know sexually molested this boy and you know the boy went to his dad and they were going to convict him and have him put in a jail and while he is waiting on trial 
for things to happen he paid somebody to go and send a message to this 15 year old to get him to stop talking and um so the 15 year old did he went and kicked this kid's ass or i think it was an 18 year old that did it wouldn't kick the 15 year old kid's ass and then the 15 year old told on him so then he admitted yeah gacy sent me to do it um and he got in trouble for that too so gacy was sent 10 years initially for for this served 18 um, months yeah he served 18 months but he was a model fucking citizen in prison Mm. um i mean just absolutely um, he did a lot for the prisoners there i mean as crazy as it sounds he worked his way up in the kitchen um he got all of the prisoners raises um he actually ended up being responsible for them building a mini golf inside of the prison i mean he did a lot there and uh so they released him and they released him back to his mom um the only stipulation for him to go back was if he went back to chicago and he did and um while he was in chicago um very shortly afterwards i mean he got in trouble two more times he got in trouble um in what? february of 1971 for sexually Lessons. assaulting yeah yeah for sexually assaulting another teen and then a couple of months after that another one um but both of them didn't uh they didn't follow through in court with what was you know with what was being said probably because gacy was using a lot of the same tactics that his father was using and you know probably gay shaming these kids and you know we know that he's capable of sending a message or manipulation because he's been doing it at this point like we know he's been doing stuff like that um so that's probably what you know he he was doing but he gets out and and uh you know then he starts you know working his way up the ranks again within his community um you know he started running for the local local government there democratic party and hanging out with those people um that's when the famous clown came in you know he had he had two different clowns he had pogo which a lot of people are more familiar with pogo clown which is weird um because then he also had patches and and they kind of had um you know comedy and tragedy personalities and uh so you know patches was kind of more of the dark the darker one while pogo was more of the lighthearted one so i don't know why people know that one more um but either way um you know he would do his clown work just throughout the community but it wasn't really like it was a big deal i mean sometimes you know he would he would get off you know doing service somewhere else and then he would be in his clown get up and he would go drink at the local bar you know his pogo or, or patches or whatever and um but it's not like this was like part of his act you know it wasn't like he had to dress up like the clown to kill people like that wasn't his that wasn't his thing um but anyway so i'll backtrack a little bit so you know he had his wife and his kids um whenever he was arrested his wife and his kids left and they never came back ever again he never talked to them ever again who knows what happened to them she might have came forward a little bit later in life and and discuss things and whatnot but you know leave uh, you know leave leave them alone (laughs) leave the kids alone leave the wife alone They, they didn't do this um and uh but like i mentioned he ended up getting remarried and um you're right the wife his wife was also really into kind of a lot of this perverse stuff that that he was into which i guess i should use perverse slightly because she wasn't into raping boys and killing people but she liked the party i mean you know <laughs> and that's fine it was a good time you know, i don't know what to tell you, <laughs> you know. right i mean you know they they enjoyed themselves quite a bit um but yeah i mean that marriage didn't last very long like i said before she you know kind of she left and that was that i mean and then from that point on he kind of um he that's when he started up the construction company and uh that other guy worked for him for a while god what was his name oh my gosh the other killer we talked about him on the show oh the um oh my god from the ripper crew Yeah, yeah 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 that guy yeah worked with with gacy for a while and uh you know i think we kind of might have talked about this before but do you think they knew that the other one was also fucked up yeah well it's richard getch robin getch and the chicago Mm. rippers um yeah i mean i I will get let me know when you want me to pull the trigger on that and i'll get into all that shit because because gacy had a lot of associates through that construction company yeah um so yeah he uh gacy (laughs) something that I know a lot about started a a subcontractor business basically where he would do small jobs and um, how he met a lot of his victims. And it's also 
according to him, how he met a lot of his accomplices as well. So uh, he had this construction company where he would hire young men for day labor. They'd be do th- they'd be doing things like fixing gutters or, or laying concrete for driveways or just, you know, random shit that like you're not going to hire a big construction company to do and you're doing it mostly for small residential places or commercial outfits or whatever, right? So this gave him the opportunity to bring in a lot of labor. Like he had have young men coming and going. A lot of these guys hard up working for cash. You didn't need to be terribly qualified to do this shit. He'd have guys on crews and, you know, if someone was good, they'd last. If not, then fuck them. We wouldn't use them on the next job. Um, And this is where a lot, he found a lot of his victims from. Right. But uh, it also coincidentally enough ended, ended up being a place where, like we mentioned just a minute ago, uh, Robin Getch from the Chicago Ripper crew worked in New Gacy. Um, and then something that I came across last night is uh, he worked with a guy named Philip Pask, who would go on to be. Um, so Philip Pask, actually, before he started working for Gacy, was a uh, Chicago lifeguard and um, for the city was a lifeguard for the city of Chicago. And before I'm telling the story, I'll fucking out of order. So, uh, Philip, okay, Philip Pask gets, goes to jail for um, some thefts and murders and just, like, doing violent criminal shit. While he's in jail, he meets John Norman. Now, John Norman was uh, this guy from Texas who had a, basically, like, a escort service that he was running out of the classified ads of, uh, like magazines geared towards gay dudes right so um in the back it would it, it you know hey if you want to subscribe to our newsletter send three dollars in a stamp self-addressed stamped envelope to this p.o box and then what you would get in return is a list of young men with you know pictures of them and like you know their their stats and everything and then you could basically make an appointment for these men to come to your house and live with you for three days for sex. And then it was, it was a human trafficking ring. Okay. Okay. That, that was done through the classified ads of these newspapers. The police caught wind of it. They raided this apartment in New York and found index cards with like 30,000 names and addresses of clients, people that were renting these young men. Okay. So this guy goes to jail while he's in jail. He meets Philip Pask. Philip Pask becomes friends with John Norman. Philip Pask, and while John Norman's in jail, he's still running this operation through the mail, and the jail has no idea what the fuck he's doing. Philip Pask gets out of jail. He runs this organization for John Norman out of Chicago while Norman finishes up his prison sentence. John Norman gets released from jail, and the Tribune, the Chicago Tribune, realizes that philip pask is working with john norman because they both share a p.o box at the post office and of like the same they, they they're both sending their mail to the same p.o box right so the newspaper makes this connection between these two people they find out that philip pask is working as a city of chicago life lifeguard at a fire station for like youths all right and like the fire station has a swimming pool he's the lifeguard it's a bunch of kids all right obviously he gets fired immediately, but who does he get hired by? John Wayne Gacy. So now he works for Gacy's construction company. And some of the the thing about Philip Pask is that uh, he was very, he was tall and he had very bad skin. He had like a really pockmarked face. And sometimes he, he, he would like to dress in women's clothing, right? And a couple of the victims that escaped Gacy had said that they thought that he had people with him when these like rapes were happening and he was in the house that people were in the house when Gacy was like attacking him. We can get into Gacy's whole thing, what he would do to these guys in a minute. But one of the, one of the recurring descriptions was that there was a tall person that was a, so that was in the room or, or, or a person that was dressed as a woman, but they knew it was a man or something. So there there's been like suggestions by some of the victims that survived that Philip Pask may have been involved with Gacy. They definitely worked together, but that he might have also been involved in Gacy's uh, 
kidnappings and tortures and shit. And then, I mean, even Gacy himself had said several times that uh, he had accomplices and stuff. And he kind of went back and forth about who they were. Um, so, yeah, that's what I got on that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and that's, you know, well, and, you know, Gacy has always said that he's had accomplices. One of the first things that he asked when he was arrested was whether or not his accomplices had been arrested, too. And they're like, what do you mean? right (laughs) you know and so he had always maintained i mean there's even record of certain victims that you know ended up falling under you know the gacy had been tried with that um you know gacy wasn't even in the same state when they when they were killed yeah there's some suggestion that they might have been using gacy's house and that was that was why there were so many bodies in that crawl space that you know this this uh delta project you know, they were trafficking these young men around the country, number one. Most of it was just for prostitution, but some of these young men got fucking killed, and Gacy's house was a place to dump the bodies. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and that's why these, uh, these accomplices of his, they weren't so much accomplices in the sense of Gacy was the ringleader, and these people were killing underneath him. It may have been more of they were adjacent to Gacy or Gacy might have been actually one of their underlings. And this was a much bigger operation that Gacy was doing a smaller part of. And, uh, oh, that's, yeah, okay, that's what I got. Well, and people were in and out. I mean, he did have, you know, these people that were working for him, these young men that were working for him that he was also sleeping with or you know whatever it was they were doing like that would come live with him you know for periods of time i mean he had people kind of in and out of the house all the time and like realistically you know he he says he didn't he didn't stop putting people in the crawl space because he got arrested he stopped putting people in the crawl space because there wasn't any more room right (laughs) that's exactly what he says that's exactly what he says yeah (laughs) some of the what's interesting is that the so yeah some of the people that uh he murdered or his you know yeah that he murdered legally speaking um were drifters or they were young men that were hard on their luck that started working for his construction company uh when when gacy was finally brought to justice it was by the displays police department which is where he was living at the time what's interesting though is that for as long as his murder spree went on for it was a lot of young men from chicago that were missing as well chicago police never got involved they had aspects of this case gacy had been suggested as a as a uh you know as a suspect that they never followed up on they really they i don't want to say they dropped the ball on it because it's so like the, the evidence at times was so overwhelming towards him and they did so little that it really does look like they were just letting him fucking do whatever and a lot of the victims that went missing were from were younger white guys, high school age white guys that lived in nice parts of the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the I was reading where his victims went missing from. It's like all like around where I work, actually, like Edgewater, Lakeview, Rogers Park, like, you know, decent parts of the city. These weren't necessarily all um, not that it would have made it any any more justifiable or better but these weren't necessarily all like broken forgotten poor little kids these were like you know your average middle-aged middle middle class white kid that went missing and the parents like you know are screaming for justice why can't anyone do something the police do nothing and then chicago police who's it's happening in their own backyard you know they knew they had some kind of it it wouldn't have taken a whole lot of in into you know uh intuitiveness to connect the dots and figure out there was some kind of there was some kind of person operating and and all these different disappearances and and, you know fit the same mo and uh nothing nothing until shit started happening in displays and then the then a, a local suburban police force much smaller got involved and then they cracked the case almost you know fairly fairly quickly Well, because, I mean, Gacy had initially confessed to 45 murders, okay? He was convicted of 33, right? And so he had had confessed to 45, but that's murder victims. Gacy had been doing this song and dance of raping and torturing men, young men, kids pretty much, for years, you know? And so he had some people that he just raped and tortured and then let go. One of his victims claims that during his rape and torture 
um, somebody else was there. They saw right. somebody else there. They were watching what was going on, and you know he had maintained that that's what was. And then like, um, you know that that he knew somebody else was there. Didn't know who it was, but I mean, so you know that's not really an accident. The police have on record Gacy because they followed him around. It wasn't again. It wasn't just like they went and searched his house and they found a whole bunch of weird stuff. But it took a minute for them to actually you know pin Gacy. I think they searched his house twice and then still couldn't actually arrest him for anything. Uh-huh. And then they he confessed, and that's the only reason why he was arrested to begin with. And that's where they found the bodies in the crawl space. But they had him um, under surveillance. He couldn't handle the pressure. There right. was, if there's, I read a couple accounts of like the last 12 hours that they had him under surveillance and he was losing his fucking shit. He was, yeah. yeah. And went, went to his lawyer and confessed everything. And, uh, but, you know, while he was under surveillance, I mean, Gacy had met up with a couple of the workers for this construction company. Right. And yeah. They had a, some strange conversations that kind of implied that maybe, you know, these people knew what, what was going on and uh but the police just never really i mean they just you know they had their guy and that's all they you know that's all they really cared about they didn't care about investigating further and you know i don't know if it's just because you know homosexuality in the 70s was was weird and they just didn't want to deal with it they didn't want to hear all the details it was very strange the way that it was handled but then again we i mentioned before gacy was not just some guy this he was involved in politics you know he had a lot of friends i mean he would have these parties where they would have upwards of like 400 people you know and and these are high profile people that would show up to gacy's parties and you know where he was the special you know guest of honor and things like that so i mean you definitely gotta wonder you know what was going on there especially because when this all started happening like with the jc's and stuff like that that's kind of when it was starting to get out that these people were you know having these sex parties and they were wife swapping and trading porn and things like that well so six years after his first murder and seven months before he was finally arrested there's a picture of gacy with uh jimmy carter's wife the first lady yeah where they met at some you know they met at some function and for him to have met her and get the picture with her he had to be cleared by the secret service right so that's one of those things where is it that they're that inept at their job or is it that the system is that corrupt that he was flagged as being okay you know what i mean despite the fact that he had already been arrested for sodomizing a 15 year old back in iowa you know what i mean that he had already and then and then uh intimidating witnesses that he had been arrested twice six months after his initial parole in chicago for sexually assaulting young men you know what i mean like all this stuff pre now granted maybe the secret service didn't know about the murders he was doing and the bodies he was stashed in the crawl space but he had already had quite the fucking reputation at that point and they still let him get his photo op with the you know with the democratic party with the with the carter's wife and shit so i mean it's a lot of like it's a lot of really suspect stuff and i i mean spoiler alert i honestly think when when, when i finally knowing like researching this case and always knowing that there was a little bit more there i really didn't i didn't know what the missing piece was and finally getting to the delta project and that connection and when you see that he was associated with those people it kind of makes everything make a little bit more sense i feel like that's the missing piece in the gacy story and that i think he was just a low-level lieutenant of a much larger organization and i know that sounds like really fucking woo-woo but that's what i that's my two cents that's what you came here you know that's why you're listening <laughs> to this week's podcast right that's what i'm floating out there for you, you want to hear the fun stuff yeah, yeah i mean nobody's ever really proven that i mean I, yeah i'll be honest with you like in my perspective as, as somebody that you know really likes is like the right word somebody that has a strong interest in true crime um you know the, as much i've read about gacy before of course but you know the, my, the extent of the stories that i knew was just that um you know it that he just was gross and he just you know killed these young men and boys because he was a closeted homosexual and not you know i don't know he just like well and that's another thing i mean it wasn't just like it wasn't like he was killing them just to hide the fact that he was, you know, touching them or whatever. It's because he was like actually violent. Like he played these horrible fucked up games with them. And you know. the one that sticks with me is where um, 
he he can't. So what he would do is he'd bring them back to the house and he'd say that he knew magic and he did all this stuff. Yeah. And he'd get them to handcuff themselves, and then while they were handcuffed, he'd fucking rape them. And oh, yeah. uh, he, the line was, uh, "Do you want to see you know a trick?" And he he does the handcuff thing, and then he gets out of it. So then he handcuffs them so they can try to get out of it. And he says, "Well, the trick is is that if you want to get out of the handcuffs, you got to have the key." Right. And at that point, they realize there is no trick. They've just been handcuffed. They're in this guy's bedroom. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And like he would kneel on their chest and he'd force feed him his fucking cock. Yeah. And then roll him over and he would just fucking sodomize him. And then, but what's crazy to me, what's what's the what's so crazy to me is that then he would sometimes let him go. He, he would sometimes let him go. Yeah, he would. Thinking like, I just did this to you. And, and I want to, I want to let me let me kind of go off with this for a second here i just did this to you and i think so little of you that and and this whole process that i'm not even afraid i'm gonna let you go and what are you gonna do you're gonna tell someone they're not gonna believe you fuck you yeah that's a, that blows my fucking mind and except i had something very very similar happen to me when i was in my early 20s i was delivering pizzas for this place and um it started off really cool and I was kind of friendly with my boss and, and all this stuff. And we would hang out and have a few beers after work. And he hired this like cook to come in and like help out in the kitchen because the business started doing better. Right. And the, the cook that came in was a real weird scumbag. He was missing an eye and he had a knife slash. He looked like a James Bond villain where he like, like scar or something. You know what I mean? And uh, he um, one night, I was it was just the three of us and we were finishing up and uh the the guy at the pizza place they were joking around about like like I don't know how it came up but he told me this story about a friend of his <clears throat> that went to a bar one night and met this woman at the bar and they had a few drinks and he goes back to the woman's apartment and him and the woman are fooling around and she handcuffs him. And the ha second the, the handcuff snaps onto, like, the bed frame or whatever, the closet door opens up and this big guy jumps out and fucking rapes the guy all night long. And then lets him go. And he tells me this story. And I was like, holy shit. And he goes, uh, yeah. He's like, you know. And I go, well, why didn't he tell the cops? And the guy started laughing. He goes... If that happened to you, you tell the cops. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I would. What are you? Right. Of course I would. The first place I'd fucking go after the hospital is to the fucking police. And he goes, no, that's what you say now. But wait until that fucking happens to you. And wait until it's happening to you. And the whole time the guy's fucking you all night long, he's telling you, if you tell anybody, I'm going to fucking kill you. If you tell anybody, I'm going to fucking kill you. By the time that night's over with, when you left that fucking house, you wouldn't say a goddamn word to anybody. And I was like, dude, and I quit that job that night because I was, it freaked me out so much that we had, I had that conversation with this guy that he told me, and he was probably high and drunk and just talking shit, but it like, it, it like fucking shook me to my core. You know what I mean? Because it made me think like, I didn't even want to, I, I, I assume I would tell somebody, but like, I don't know. Some people have that mentality. where like, no, you wouldn't. Like you, you, they, they honestly believe that you can get into someone's head and you can torture them and fuck with them so badly that no, they wouldn't tell. And, and hearing, reading the, reading like this Gacy shit and what he used to do to these guys and thinking about that shit that my boss told my ex boss, thank God, told me that night, like it just made this weird correlation. I don't know. I mean, it, well, it's crazy. It happened a lot. I mean, especially as, yeah. as a woman, it, you know, we don't report a lot of things. And so, you know, it, it definitely um, happens more often than you think. Um, but especially for somebody, if, if that somebody that just did this to you is John Wayne Casey, who happens to be really highly regarded within your community. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like he was just, again, he wasn't just a terrible person. He was very likable. He was very personable. He was somebody. And he's like, nobody's going to believe you. I fucking dress up as a clown for children's parties. Like, <laughs> nobody's going to believe you. You're, they're right. just going to believe that you're gay. And I'm just going to tell them that you were compliant and that you're gay. And I've gotten away with this before. And you know what I mean? So, like, those are the kinds of thoughts that 
you know he he was implanting in these people's heads who he let go you know and they and they just and they'll tell you that because i mean initially you know he was the cool guy i mean they'd go to his house and they'd hang because it wasn't always like it was just one person he would have parties where these all these young kids would show up and they would like do things like watch porn together and or you know i guess you know was it stag films or whatever you know they, they'd watch porn and he'd give them alcohol and drugs that they couldn't get otherwise and you know he was giving them money they were working and then like um well we were kind of talking when we did the episode with uh with your buddy lee actually um you know about having that that coach and that cool you know having that cool guy that you'd go there and then you know just kind of one thing leads to another i mean gacy was offering some of these guys he was paying a good amount of money to do stuff with them and yeah you know, it, so. it sounds to me like he was more of a pimp and unbeknownst to some of the men that that lost their lives or they found in the crawl space maybe they thought they were just you know being pimped out to these older guys or these other people, these other pillars of the community or whoever he associated with. Right. Cause he's got all these friends that are covering his ass six ways to Sunday. And all he's doing is, is, is hanging right. out with young prostitutes. Okay. You know, now he's probably, he was probably more of a pimp and a garbage man. And he, he set up and you know, these young kids would think, come over thinking like, Oh, I'm going to get paid $800 to blow this fucking, you know, business owner i'm gonna or the grocery store owner i'm gonna blow this dentist right I'm gonna get fucking seven hundred dollars and what they don't realize is no that was last week this week you're gonna get fucking killed and right. then and gacy had the reason. gacy had the place where the guys could come in they could they could fuck these young guys and then they could kill him and then he'd dispose of the body you know and what do you think i mean why do you because obviously you know those you know the the dead people can't come back and say well there was this many people that killed us i mean let's just assume that it was just gacy i guess well why, why do you, what do you think escalated it from being just one of these you know sexual assaults to to murder i mean what why uh, would he jump that far? well that's something that you know i think the the stereotypical thing is oh because killing is the ultimate rush you know what i mean yeah. and like you know it, it's it's I he I read somewhere that he described it as, you know, better than the most mind numbing orgasm was killing another human being. Um I don't know. I've never killed anyone. I've come pretty hard in my life, but I mean <laughs> I, I I can't really compare the two. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I've yeah, said well, some really weird shit by while nutting before, let me put it like that. Oh, but okay. uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but um I can't yeah, it should have been there. But uh, no, it's just I, I don't get it. Like, I, I think that um, it could be a sex thing. It could be to heighten his own arousal thing or or it could have been 30 different guys living out some kind of weird snuff fantasy and Gacy being like, no, I get it, man. I get it. You know, I've done it before, too. You want to try it before? And then who knows? Maybe they had fucking cameras in there. Maybe that was maybe that was, you know the the beta test of the fucking epstein island was gacy's shitty little house in the burbs you know where they give the guys the chance to do this shit and then fucking blackmail or something i have no idea i mean the dude was obviously fucking depressed. you know they found a, an 18 inch dildo in, in gacy's house was that for him though or was that for his victims i have no idea i, I don't know if i want to know right well i mean you at know, that point uh, you know who gives a shit about someone's intestines when you're going to kill them and bury them in the crawl oh space in 10 minutes I can't anyway. imagine. what a terrible fucking horrible sick disgusting awful way to die i mean really you know that's well right and and i i, I think it my theory of him being a pimp and a garbage man makes more sense because how could somebody it, it makes more sense for him to be slightly human still, because yeah. that means that he only committed that crime a handful of times instead of 33. You know what I mean? Because at that point, if you've brutalized and murdered that many fucking people, how how are you then turning around and going out in public? And and like Dahmer was a recluse. Like no one ever talks about Dahmer as being this charismatic life of the party that everyone fucking loved. Dahmer wasn't married fucking twice. You know what I mean? Richard yeah. Ramirez wasn't a pillar of the fucking community. Uh, I'm not saying there's not charismatic serial killers, 
But I think by and large, most of them that do the real fucked up shit, they're very antisocial. They're very weird. And and they're not blending in as, as seamlessly, unless they're white. They're not blending in as seamlessly as, as people like to think. Gacy's a, Gacy was different. Gacy was was way too social. He was way too charismatic to yeah. have to have I feel to have done that to that many people and that short a spirit period of time where he was doing it like once a month. Oh yeah. He, he was literally doing it like once a month. He was kidnapping a person off the fucking street. Right. He was going through all of this, this whole song and dance, brutalizing them, disposing of the fucking bodies, all this shit. Like, damn, dude, take it. You're like you're kind of busier, than I, am. busier <laughs> than I am. You know what I mean? Jesus. I mean, but no, you're right. And because it's not like Gacy wasn't a successful individual, even after he served prison time. I mean, he went on to go have this 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 contracting business and he did good you know he 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 succeeded in every area of his life and did even as a prisoner you know it's impressive the shit that the guy did and you know he has to have some degree of likability there in order to to even get to that point but he had friends yeah i think it's the friends too i think it's the likability i think it's the unfortunate uh advantage that a that a you know fucking middle-aged white guy has in this country or had back then um you know i think that was a part of it like you know he 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 looked the part he uh was likable he was passable and i think he also you know he knew how to get in good with guys i think he was a lot of it was him schmoozing these people having these parties and getting everyone kind of drunk and getting everyone everyone having things get a little risque you know and and you find something that these people are into and you give them something that no one else can do and you become their dealer and then you blackmail them for the shit that you sold them, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Or, or he just got plugged into this Delta project thing and he didn't even have to build it on his own. They, they, they talent scouted him and they put him to work and he yeah. was just an extension of this. Cause that's what the Delta project was doing. was trafficking, was trafficking young men sometimes just for sex and sometimes for murder, you know? Yeah. Well, and there's some people that even believe that um, another another killer, another really strange case, um, Dean Coral, they think that he is also tied into this. Now, he was active in the 70s as well in Texas, and that was a weird, weird thing because what had happened was uh, Dean was actually shot and killed um by one of the kids that was kind of helping him lure victims to his house and he killed almost uh almost 30 30 teenage boys that he was doing the same shit to you know <laughs> that gacy was doing and so when this kid killed this guy and then the kid and then another another accomplice kid came forward um they kind of told this crazy tale of sex trafficking and torture and and all this crazy stuff and there's a lot of people that think that again even though he was operate he was operating in texas that this was all part of the same ring it was all part of the delta project and it was all the same thing well it does go back to the um franklin bank do you know that story oh i shouldn't have said it god damn it uh -oh. this this is uh uh this is one of the uh really famous ones about um it was a congressman or something in north dakota who uh found out that it was i'm not you know what just look up franklin bank i'm not even i don't want to butcher it i don't want to butcher it oh, no. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna mumble and stutter my way through it i'm gonna get half the shit fucking wrong anyway just look up franklin bank it's a very famous case it's one of these things where like there there was money being embezzled from this thing and it 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 started off as one kind of investigation and just accidentally goes sideways and blows up into this whole entire fucking enormous supposed conspiracy of human trafficking of young boys all across the united states and there's some real wild aspects of the story about tunnels and trains and fucking shit but i'll let listeners look up on it and it's not directly that's not directly connected to gacy but the delta project is so it kind of like the narrative starts with this program then morphs into the delta project and then that's where date gacy gets involved yeah okay all right well i mean it it just seems like the more you kind of um dive down these rabbit holes the more you kind of start you know really finding some some leads and the other things and you know it's interesting because the same you know within the the dean coral case this 
kind of the same thing happened was that there's this kind of there's these unanswered questions that don't really make a lot of sense that the police just kind of refuse to follow up on and you know why you know i I guess why not entertain the idea for a minute i mean i understand there's some conspiracies out there that are just absolutely insane like the earth is flat you know we know that it's not um but um you know there's some out there that we know did happen like we've talked about mk ultra we know that happened (laughs) like that's real and so i mean they're not all crazy why not just open up an investigation on these things and see if there's a tie there i mean you know are we ever going to do it now i mean this was something that seemed to happen primarily in the 70s and um you know why i guess what would be the point now unless we had an inkling that it was still happening which uh, you know i suppose is possible um just very interesting you know very interesting when you really start like i said chasing those uh you know those loose ends and trying to tie them up because a lot of it there's again there's a lot of things that don't make sense what what was gacy talking about that night when he was under surveillance i mean it seemed pretty clear that the people who were talking he was talking to were very much aware that there was a bunch of dead people why didn't they talk to those people why i mean you know it's so it's very odd but either way um gacy was uh eventually executed of course when he went to prison you know eventually for the rest of his life he was a model prisoner again um you know he well like pat you were saying he sold a bunch of paintings you know you can you can get a gacy painting they're out there somewhere Um, but he was eventually executed. He did have KFC and uh, a bunch of other stuff for his last meal. Pat, have you ever thought about your last meal? Yeah, because uh, a lot because of the Gacy thing, because his last meal was KFC, and um, that got leaked to the press. I would actually, that's something that uh, I'd invite people to investigate a little bit further, because I think that was his requested last meal, and he got so angry when it was leaked to the press that it, and it became a news story that he actually changed it to something like way more expensive and lavish just to fuck with the prison and make them like at the last minute have to come up with something different but all he initially all he wanted was was kfc um what would my last meal be uh i don't know teenage boy flesh so that i can get superpowers and break out of the prison or whatever these people eat it for that's not what you're <laughs> So I, I looked up that Franklin credit thing. This is it. It'll take two seconds just to spit out. Like, here's the deal. So uh, basically, in the late 80s, um, they were doing uh, a Republican senator of Nebraska, uh, John DeCamp, who is the most decorated Vietnam vet of all time, was doing a uh, was investigating the Franklin Credit Union for embezzling funds. And it was run by a fellow Republican that was uh, – I guess his like running against him or something by the name of Larry King, no relation to obviously the CNN uh, talk show host, Larry King. But uh, as he was investigating the Franklin credit union, uh, they found out that it was actually, it had, it was this pedophile connection, like ring thing. And they talked to a lot of victims who said that uh, testified against King and various elite figures in American politics and entertainment. What ensued was multiple, uh, assassinations of key witnesses, a reluctance to investigate by the FBI and other investigate, invest to go, whatever departments, witness intimidation, and a complete folly of justice. So yeah, the the Franklin Credit Union look into that, and the connection to that back to Gacy was when they were interviewing some of the trafficking victims. One of them mentioned uh, Paskey, Philip Paskey by name. Philip Paskey was the guy that did time with John Norman, who ended up working with uh, John Wayne Gacy at his construction company, who got the lifeguard job at the city of Chicago, who would cross-dress as a woman, who had the pockmark face. That, Philip Paskey, after all the Gacy shit's over, ends up being tied to the Credit, Credit, Franklin Credit Union uh, human trafficking scandal. Oh God. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> i know i feel like i'm just like regurgitating all the shit but no it's go. okay it's that's fine uh wow yeah i had no idea that that was i mean come on is it really that much of a small world probably not no probably no. not no. and my last meal would be burrito <laughs> station so there you go burrito station. <laughs> 
Gacy had, I'll tell you, Gacy, um, Gacy's final meal was a dozen deep fried shrimp. I looked it up while you were talking about that. A dozen deep fried shrimp, a bucket of KFC's original recipe chicken, French fries, a pound of strawberries, and a bottle of Diet Coke. And then does it say anything about him changing it at the last minute? No. It I remember that being on the news. That might be. Well, that was, yeah. I mean, like you said, that was kind of your time. If you remember that, he was very mad. I mean, there's like a whole, I, there was a website I found one time where you can look at inmates, at people on death row's last meals, like coming and going. That's so I don't know. I don't know why, like, people are just into that. Well, because that's really not something, I mean, is that something that we think about every day? When we think about something like our very last meal, I mean, you, then you kind of got to face your own mortality. And uh, that's a hard, it's a hard thing to think about. I mean. Yeah. Because some of them are very weird, you know, and they kind of are a mishmash of different things. Um, but yeah, there was, I, I don't know, I can't promise that I'll ever find that website again, but I remember looking at it once and that was the thing. Um, also, his final words were, um, Go fuck kiss, yourself. Yeah, kiss, kiss my ass. ass. <laughs> yeah, kiss my ass is what it was. So um, that's a uh, nice guy, that Gacy. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a, a good dude, but uh, obviously not. Um, but that's, I mean, that's John Wayne Gacy. I'm sure you guys have heard the story before. You might have maybe even heard it told this way with all these weird um, ties and connections and the different perspective as to why. Um, or maybe you were like me and you just never really heard it told that way and Gacy was completely at fault. Um, but, you know, there there it is, the uh, the infamous killer clown. Pat, you got any final words on, on Gacy or anything that we talked about? Don't let people handcuff you unless you know no. them reasonably well. I just well, well, that's true. Yeah, don't yeah. do it. Um, that's probably not a good idea. Like, I don't care how fun you think that person is. Like, they're not fun. They're John Wayne Gacy, and <laughs> you should probably leave. <laughs> right. You know, don't don't go to someone's house and let them show you magic tricks because that's where it starts. <laughs> that's how you. I mean, that's how you end up having a bad time, um, you know, in, in the cross space of the Gacy house. That house isn't there anymore, is it? I don't know. It was there for a while. What? It's not what that far. Mean? Yeah, they didn't tear it down right away. It's uh, it's not that far. I don't know. You should stop wherever it was and whatever it is now. I'll take pictures for me. Or you just come to Chicago and you can, we'll drive past it. <sighs> I mean, I will. I'll, but... I'll let you out at the end of the block, and I'll pick you up at the other side. So you can walk past it. <laughs> Just not look weird. <laughs> that would look one thousand percent. They would know exactly why I'm there. Like, <laughs> this fucking weird girl coming to look at the. There's another house. weird one. Yeah, I can't imagine. I can't imagine like moving in there or moving in to anywhere around there, because it would be just flooded with like, you know, sadness and air do wells. Ne'er do wells. Well, what, uh, well, that's true. It's a very, it's probably a very famous street now. Oh, well, I don't know. I think that the longer things go on, I mean, I'm sure they expect people to come check out that area. Um, but I think that for the most part, it's not like it's a hot spot. You know, the Chris Watts house, like that's that house is probably way more famous right now than the Gacy house is. Uh, but again, I don't think the house is there anymore. Yeah, it's been demolished. Okay. Uh, so it was. Uh, it was a, turned into a vacant lot in 1984. It stood vacant until 1988. People bought it and then uh, built a new house on it. And then uh, as of 2019, it was currently for sale. Oh. So there is a house there now, but it's not the same house. And it's for sale. Right. For half a million dollars. Well, this was 2019. You could probably get a little bit cheaper now. Is that market? Is that market price around there? Or? Uh, Norwood Park, like, yeah, I don't know. It's the Burbs. It's out west. I don't. That's probably. It's one of the nicer. Uh, I mean, I could see it potentially. It's a nice house. Let me put it like that. Like, it's not. It's not a mansion or anything, but. Um, hey, well, whatever. I wouldn't fucking move in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably on it as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even just, why would you want to live there? Like, you could live anywhere else. I would not want to live there. And if, here's the thing. I think that, like, they, they totally screwed the pooch by tearing that old one down. Because no one's going to want to live there, right? But if you had the original house as it was, someone will fucking buy that thing. And you can, yeah, you could turn it into a little museum, a little gay right. museum. Right, right, right. If you If you raise it to the ground and then try to pretend like that's not what fucking happened in that spot, no one's going to buy that. Right, everybody knows what happened there. Like it's no, I'm sure the neighbors all know. Right. 
I mean, they have to. Maybe they don't. Maybe there's people that live on that street now that have no fucking clue what happened there. No, it's the first thing. Any, I'd be that dude that told you the day you moved in. <laughs> hey, hear about what happened what? over there? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> You'd be that neighbor. <laughs> I'd be that guy. <laughs> come like, down you, ever my... heard of, you ever heard of the Delta Project? <laughs> I, I come down to my bathrobe with my sandals on with my socks. <laughs> my basketball shorts and my oh, no. like a Doctor Who shirt. Like, hey, are, are you a sandals and socks guy, Pat? Is this the end of our friendship? Is this? Oh, I totally this, am. I don't. Listen, here? listen, I have never had a dress to get pussy. Never have. Never will. Oh, I look how God. I look, and that's what it takes. And if if you think, I don't know. Maybe that is why my wife doesn't sleep with me. I I don't know. I've I haven't noticed it affecting my game too much. Let me put it like that. <laughs> okay well on that note <laughs> i think i think we're done here um but uh no very very nice very uh very informative very interesting stuff maybe we'll talk about just the delta project and, and more um you know and, and a bigger extent on a future episode i always tease these future episodes and sometimes they happen and sometimes they don't sure you never know when it's uh wednesday so um but on that note guys we'll see you back here next wednesday